I'm going to talk a little bit about moving towards sustainable transportation in the U.S. or in the world for that matter. We hear a lot about sustainable transportation on the media, in the University of Tennessee and elsewhere, but it's really an elusive concept. And really, when, when we think about sustainable transportation, we really need to start thinking about the appropriate technology for the trips that we make. This is something that we see a lot in America, we see it around the world, is the SUV. There's a paradigm in America, or anywhere for that matter, that you have to find a vehicle that meets most or all of your transportation needs. And what you end up with is the sport utility vehicle. The sport utility vehicle has this term utility in the middle of it, and it is a, uh, also an economic term that describes well-being that you derive from consuming something. And when you're pulling a boat or you're transporting seven or eight people all at the same time, you're deriving a lot of satisfaction from consuming your SUV. The problem, of course, is most of the time we're not doing that. Most of the time we're commuting, we're going to the grocery store, we're picking up the kids, and so the SUV maybe is not the most appropriate technology for our most of our travel demand. However, of course, we don't have we have a problem, right? We can't have a car that, that's perfect for every trip that we make. We can't have the one passenger car, the two passenger car, the five passenger car. So we end up with, with a lot of single occupant SUVs driving in our cities. Fortunately, in the last decade or so, there's been a technological revolution, it's an innovation in the way we provide transportation to people. This is car sharing, and this, for the first time, is making what used to be impossible possible. We can share cars, a fleet of cars, among strangers. You and I don't have to know each other, and we can drive the same car on the same day, even within the same hour. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to choose the appropriate technology of transportation vehicle for the appropriate trip. I don't need to have an SUV unless I really need that SUV for that trip. I don't need to own a pickup truck when I move or when I go furniture shopping, those few times a year that I might do that, if I have a pickup truck at my disposal whenever I need it. So this is a really an interesting and innovative way to provide transportation services. Cities are popping up with these car sharing sort of services all over. Knoxville is going to have one soon. But the question is, we're moving to a place where we need massive reductions in energy consumption, massive reductions in greenhouse gas emissions, local air pollution, to get to this tolerable level of sustainable transportation, sustainability in our environment. So is this the solution? Or are we really kind of starting to work on the margins of doing better, but maybe not good enough. So 50%, I, I would like all of you in this room to sit back and visualize and do this experiment. Think of 50% of your trips, and, and all of your trips, of course, but 50% of them. And this is kind of a magic number. In the US, 50% of all of our trips are bikeable, okay? And by bikeable, I mean their distance is short enough to be about three miles, okay? And, and considered a bikeable trip. So think about all your trips and think about what proportion of your trips are bikeable. And then think about how many of those trips that you actually take by bike, by bicycle, okay? Not many, right? In the US, we, we have about 50% of these trips that are bikeable. We have somewhere in the range of 1% of our trips are actually taken by bike. Why is that? Well, if I, I, I've asked that question to a lot of people and a lot of the time, I, the response I get is, I, I haven't ridden a bike in a long time. I forgot where I parked my bike. My bike is in ill repair. It's in the garage somewhere with flat tires and a rusty chain. So that's a, that's a valid, valid reason why one wouldn't ride a bike. Other reasons are, you know, I don't carry a bike in my pocket and I take 50% of my trips uh, in an unpredictable manner. I go to lunch or I, or I pick up the kids or I go to a quick grocery store run, and I don't have a bike available, okay? Uh, so, and then there's other ones like, I haven't, I haven't, I, I, 
I don't want to exercise that much. I don't want to show up to work sweaty. I don't want to wear a suit and get a big time cardio workout. Or I don't feel safe. There's, there's all these reasons why people don't bike. And I'm here to present to you a couple of ways that we can start to break down some of these barriers. First is this, capital bike sharing. Great idea, great system. This is a, just like car sharing, this is bike sharing. And this is taking away one of those big barriers that I don't have a bike that's, that's working or I don't have a bike that has uh, air in the tires when I need it, where I need it. In Washington, D.C., these innovators harvesting the same innovative technology and other uh, uh, information is, are using this to basically share bikes among strangers just like we do car sharing. You have these stations anywhere. These bikes can be uh, uh, given to individuals, and, and you can take these trips very quickly and very efficiently, all for very low cost. But are we, are we getting to the point where we're going to have a lot of people using this? Yes. People that like to ride bicycles use this. This, this system gets a lot of use. But what about the vast population of America that isn't interested in riding a classic bicycle. They're, they still aren't interested in getting that hard workout in on their way to on their way to work or on their way to lunch. Okay. So we've uh, uh, developed on UT campus the nation's first electric bike sharing system. Okay. And so this is taking the technology that we've seen uh, with the with the bicycle sharing. And we're uh, adding electric bikes, which is, of course, a new technology. So what we're, what we're doing here is we're trying to break down the barriers of not having bikes available, but also break down some of these barriers uh, of bicycling that are intrinsic in bicycling that you have to work so hard. And in Tennessee, for example, we have hills that are insurmountable by all except the most avid bicyclists. And... Uh, the, the purpose here is to, to entice individuals to use bicycling and to, uh, and to get a little bit of a workout, but not too much. And to be able to, to do some of these trips, some of these 50% of our trips that we might want to take by bike if the technology was appropriate, if the technology was right, and if it was available at any time. So this is our station. Uh, and this is, uh, this is, I'll run you through quickly how it works. It's really quite simple. It's not very high tech. Let's face it, we built it from the ground up and, and uh, it has basic technology that's common and exists everywhere. First thing we do, we've got to identify who's taking the bike. You can't have, the, 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 we've tried, I guess transportation folks have tried over the past 30 years to do the honor system with lending out bikes and so on. And that doesn't work very well, okay? So we, we find out who's taking the bike, we scan a card, or in our case, we scan a card, you can do any number of uh, identification technologies out there. And in our case, we're, we give the choice to rent or check out electric bikes or regular bicycles. We think this is really important because regular bicycles are indeed far more sustainable than, than any mode of transportation. And so electric bikes are, are good for that other part of the population that maybe is not inclined to ride a bicycle. So we give both a choice for both. You can check out a bicycle or an electric bike. Suppose you check out an electric bike. We have a battery vending system where we make sure that you have a charged battery. And this is an attempt to overcome some of this range anxiety issues that you hear about with electric vehicles. We distribute batteries based on their state of charge to make sure that we can guarantee that you have some minimum amount of Slide that into the, ba the battery rack, and you can auto automatically unlock the bike. The bike rack locks right in there. All of this is automated, no individuals involved. You don't have to talk to anybody if you don't like talking to people. <laughs> and there you go, point at the thing. And then off you go. You turn on the electric bike, and this is an electric assist bike, okay? You still have to pedal, you still have to get a little bit of exercise, but not too much, and you are classified as a regular bicyclist, okay? So the next step is you go on your trip, and what you end up doing is you end up finding hills anywhere around here or in many cities throughout, throughout the United States. 
One thing you don't see on me right now is you don't see a lot of sweat and you don't see a lot of spandex or lycra, okay? And that's a good thing. So the, the point here is we're trying to uh, uh, bring this technology to people that can, that, that to, to the masses, so to speak, to the people that haven't ridden a bike since they were teenagers and haven't considered riding a bike since they were teenagers. We're trying to overcome some of the uh, some of the barriers to bicycling. Uh, some avid bicyclists don't like electric bikes. Uh, and there's a, a company that makes this bike, Curry Technologies, has a tagline, getting more bicyclists on the road. One of the things that all the bike community can agree upon is we want more people on two wheels on the road. And in fact, I would say that this vehicle is appropriate for a lot more trips than, say, an SUV. If we're going to get towards sustainability, we have to quit moving around in huge chunks of steel and plastic when we don't need to carry a lot of people or things, okay? And most of the time, we don't do that. So here's our station. This is uh, the station we have built on, on campus now. Uh, we've got automatic locking, and battery management, and so on. We have another station uh, that's coming out soon that will be solar powered. And this will be as close to a zero emission electric vehicle as, uh, as we can see in a lot of, in a lot of cases. Uh, we don't need a lot of power because electric bikes don't use a lot of power. And that's 